shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul and welcome to today's devotion or if you're watching it in the afternoon good afternoon either more we are go in the gospel of matthew chapter 9 and uh, going to be looking at verse 18 where jesus restores uh, a, a, a girl and a woman is healed and uh, talking about that with regards to the kingdom of god so let's pray and uh, go into the word today father thank you for your grace and for your kindness Thank you for your spirit that continues to guide us and lead us and direct us and transform us, the transforming of our minds and bodies. And um, may you be glorified through what we learn today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, this is chapter 9, verse 18. As he, meaning Jesus, was telling them these things, and, and the things that he was telling them is what we talked about last our, our last devotion, which was regarding fasting. As he was telling them these things, suddenly one of the leaders came and knelt down before him saying, my daughter just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. So Jesus and his disciples got up and followed him. Just then a woman who had suffered from bleeding for 12 years approached from behind and touched the end of his robe. For she said to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I'll be made well. Jesus turned and saw her have courage, daughter. He said, your faith has saved you. And the woman was made well from that moment. When Jesus came to the leader's house, he saw the flute players and a crowd lamenting loudly. Leave, he said, because the girl is not dead, but asleep. And they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. Then news of this spread throughout that whole area. This is a powerful demonstration of the kingdom. And I want to, uh, as we look at what took place in Matthew, uh, draw our mind's attention to the Gospel of John, specifically where Jesus in uh, the fifth chapter, fifth chapter of John, heals an individual who has been an invalid for 38 years. And in healing that person, 
the person then stands up and picks up their mat that they have been laying on as they begged and walks, walked away. Well, according to Jewish law on the Sabbath, you're not allowed to work and carrying anything would be considered work. So the person that was healed was persecuted, saying, hey, you're, you're, you're breaking the Sabbath by working. And he responds by saying, the man who made me well told me to do this. So they questioned who it was. Eventually, they found out Jesus and they persecuted him, thinking that he was now um, breaking the Sabbath. And Jesus gives him this discourse about who he is. And in that discourse, he says, I tell you the truth. A time is coming and has come meaning there's a time in the future that will happen. And that time also is happening right now. So both and future and present, this particular time is occurring. A time is coming and has come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this. For a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to live, and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. By myself, I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just, because I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. That profound teaching is in play here. Jesus' very voice, his words that he speak, ushers in life. In the same way that God speaks in Genesis 1 and 2, and life is manifest. Life originates in God, is sustained by God, and is preserved by God. So, and specifically by God's word. So when Jesus speaks, there's life in his word. And these two accounts are an exact demonstration of life in his word. He goes to the, to the, um, the, 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 the girl that has died, and if you read, he tells her to get up. And as he speaks, he says, have courage, daughter, your faith has saved you. And in his speaking, the woman who has been subject to bleeding um, is healed. This is why it is so important to be in the word. We call it the word of God. It is the written word of God as we take and put to memory the written word of God, the actual life of the word of God begins to dwell within us and has a life of its own. So that the more our minds are focused and not just focused, but I wanna say cleansed, um, the more that we are washed in his word, that that life that's in there, it's not, see, when we think of reading something, we think of gaining information. Information is certainly important, but there is a different way of being in which our words carry with it either that which is uplifting and life-giving or life-taking. God's word as he speaks is always life-giving.
And the more we meditate on his word, the more we allow his word to wash over our mind and spirit and very being, the very redemption that's found in that word begins to take effect and the very life that's in that word begins to take effect and begins to grow. It is why Jesus refers to, uh, in parables, the word of God in seed form that a farmer went out to sow seed. It's not in its full form, it's in seed form. But once the seed is in the ground and under the right circumstances, the seed, the life that's within the seed itself begins to grow. When I was growing up, I found it amazing, or not amazing, I just took it for granted, I should say, that growing up within Lutheran church, we had confirmation, we had to memorize certain things. And I took it to mean that we memorize certain things so that we could pass a test so that we could graduate and not have to do this any longer. And it was a misunderstanding of discipleship because while we were uh, required to memorize certain things, the intention was not to pass a test in order to graduate. It was order, it should be and was intended to be the memorization of scripture in order to renew our mind. And so the actual memorization is act, the, 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 the act of memorization is actually meditation. And as such should never have stopped once we were confirmed, but should continue on throughout our entire lives so that we can call upon the word of God whenever we need it. And the word of God, the life that is within God's word will grow within us. These two stories that we read today are an example of the powerful um, life that's in God's word in healing the dead, or in healing the sick rather, and bringing back from the dead because there's life within his word. So wherever you, you may be today, as you're looking at this, I invite you to recommit if you're not, uh, if you've kind of... Um, and never committed to commit to getting into God's word and allowing God's word to wash over your mind and to transform how we think because there's life in it. There's peace in it. There's hope in it. And my prayer is that you receive that and that that, that grace that's within his word grow within you daily. That being said, thank you for joining us today. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for your word for your word is life. May we hear it, be drawn towards it, seek it, and appreciate the beautiful truth that you've shared with us. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day in the Lord. Take care. Bye-bye.